Hey guys, that's right, we are doing another electric car road trip. If you recall, a couple weeks ago we drove a Porsche Taycan from LA to Denver. And well, that did not go as planned, but we thought, you know what, let's make it even harder. Tommy, who's behind the camera, found this electric mini. It's a mini SE here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And since we just sold our Tesla Model Y, we decided to buy it for a long-term review. We actually fell in love with it when we drove it for the first time in Miami. But Tommy, what's the tricky part about getting from Albuquerque all the way back to Colorado? Well, there is one stretch north of Santa Fe where we have a 110 mile journey in between chargers and the 2020 Cooper SE we just bought is ready to go 114 miles on a single charge. So it's really going to push the electric capability of this Mini and of course the patience of me and my dad. Now you may be wondering why are we buying all these electric cars? Well, the reason is straightforward. Whether we like it or you like it or don't like it electric cars are the future so we want to be there at the forefront and road tripping an electric car is something that i think is keeping a lot of people from actually getting electric cars timing did you know that only two percent of all cars in america are electric right now uh, and maybe we're going to find out why that is on this road trip greetings my friends this video has brought to you by our friends at manscaped.com the right man needs the right tools to get the right job done properly. Recently, Manscaped came out with the waterproof lawnmower 4.0. And now, to make things better, Manscaped presents the Performance Package 4.0 Bundle. Manscaped now has an all-in-one kit that simplifies everything. The lawnmower includes replaceable ceramic blades, wireless charging, and a built-in LED. On top of that, Manscaped even offers you the Weed Whacker nose and ear hair trimmer. That's in their performance pack. And as a bonus, a bottle of ball deodorant and ball toner. You lucky dog. To make sure you never run out of supplies, you can enroll in the Peak Hygiene Plan. Go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off plus free international shipping. For a limited time, you can get two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped Anti-Chaffing Boxer Briefs. That's when you use the promo code FASTLANECAR at checkout. Take it from me, your balls, your body, and others will thank you. This is the cheapest electric car on the market today, the 2022 Mini Cooper SE. It starts at $29,900, and that is before tax credits. If you apply, this car could be under $20,000 when it's all said and done because you get up to $7,500 back from your federal taxes, and then depending on your state, it could be another couple thousand dollars. So for example, this model has got a lot of options. It comes in at $37,500. We paid $35,500 for it, and then when you consider the tax incentives, really, this is going to be a $25,000 car when it's all set and done, which is pretty cool because there is a ton of stuff to be excited about. First of all, 6.9 seconds from 0 to 60. This truly is a zippy little electric car. It's got DC fast charging, which we're definitely going to try out on this trip. When you open up the doors and check out the interior, 8.8 inch screen with navigation, heated steering wheel, heated seats. This thing is pretty much loaded. 110 miles per gallon equivalent there according to the EPA. You can see some of the options, but the coolest option on this model is the multi-tone roof. You can see it actually starts out in a dark blue, transitions to the island blue, which is the same as the exterior color, and then finishes in black. Just a really cool color combo. I love the spec on this one with the gray interior and the power spoke wheels. Now, thankfully the folks here at Sandia, Sandia Mini give us a full charge up, which is nice. As my dad mentioned, there is that one stretch where we have to go 110 miles or so. This car is rated at 114 miles according to the EPA. That's through a nearly 33 kilowatt hour battery, so hopefully we'll make it. Now the reason we came to Albuquerque is because these little cars are really, really hard to find and we had a great experience out here at Sandia Mini. Frankie was awesome and it was just a very, very easy, hassle-free purchasing experience. We had a pretty uh, nasty experience at another Mini dealer and this one just turned out to be super flawless. So big thank you to them. I'm not getting paid to say that, I just wanted to give them a shout out for being very easy to deal with. Yeah, plus they picked us up at the airport. They picked us up at the airport, right? I didn't even have to beg her to do that. She offered to do that. How cool is that? So, 
Tommy, we just sold our Tesla Model Y, which would have been a better car for this road trip, let's face it. Probably would have been more suited. And I think it's fair to say that New Mexico, because it's a very, let's call it, uh, oil-rich, you know, mineral-rich state, does not exactly have a dearth of charging stations. In fact, it's kind of a desert. Yes, I think that's a, a very keen observation, because once you get out of the main cities like Albuquerque, Santa Fe, you're pretty much out of luck. Yeah, uh, so this is gonna be a nail biter. What's our longest stretch? It's 110 miles? Yep, so tomorrow morning, 110 miles from I think Santa Fe to a place called Wagon Mound. And then we've got another big stretch into, I think like Trinidad, Colorado, and then into Pueblo. Uh, so really three big long stretches that are just nothing and nothing and nothing for miles. So what do you think of this car? I really like it so far. I, um, I you know, I, Truth be told, I, uh, I am a big Mini fan. Um, not that they pay me to say that, I just love what they represent and I love their go-kart-like natures and their affordability. And in a lot of ways, I think that the SE is probably the best of the newer Minis because it kind of is working to bring electrification to the masses, just like the original Mini brought transportation to the masses in the UK in the 60s. Yeah, and look, dude, um, like you said, a go-kart-like handling, right? Instant torque. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, more sportable. It's not as fast as a Tesla Model Y performance, but you know what? Uh, the trick here is to see if we can take a city car and actually cross country it across the most barren state for electric chargers uh, and get themselves home. I mean, that's that's part of this adventure. The other thing that's great about this car is, look, in Colorado we get a three and a half thousand dollar rebate from our taxes because we qualify. Yeah. Plus a seven and a half thousand dollar tax rebate. Right. So we're at $10,000, yep. plus Mini was kind enough to give us a $2,000, so this is really a $25,000 car. Like I said in that Tycon video, we are in the golden age of electric cars. If the government's going to pay you, in essence, to drive this, why not? Why right. not? Well, I'm not so sure about that, but we'll find out to see how our charging experience are. So 50 <laughs> miles to Santa Fe, I found a hotel that hopefully has a charger waiting for us. We'll go find out. <laughs> All right, so we made it to Santa Fe, New Mexico. Uh, I found a place here called the Santa Fe Motel and Inn. Chose it specifically because they have EV charging and it's been a great experience so far. They actually had cones mapped out to block off the chargers. And check this out, we've got one level two charger, two Tesla destination chargers. Hopefully it works like a dream, because boy, are we gonna need this uh, energy. It's loading. We're going, thank goodness. So the only scary part was that we went through basically half the battery and how many miles, 45 miles about, Tommy? Yeah. yeah. Give or take, so, but we were doing 75 on the highway with our air conditioner at full strength. So uh, it does use a lot more power the faster you go. So I think tomorrow to get 110 miles of range, we're gonna have to put it in the green plus mode and go like 60, right? 55. What, what, 55, what do we average? What, what number do we need? 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour is what we average. We need to be at like 3.94. I think we can go 65. All right, well, we'll figure it out, huh? But I love the car. Uh, I just wish they had given it a little bit bigger battery, BMW. Maybe like a 50 kilowatt hour battery. I could do with less luggage space and more range. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're not going to be adding D cells to it at any time. So we are what we are. All right, should we get some dinner, Tommy? Yep. Let's go do it. All right, Tommy. Why are we getting up the butt crack of dawn? Well, the reason is because in order to make it using the city car to go from Albuquerque all the way to Denver in a state with very few chargers, we have to go at 55 miles an hour. Isn't that right? That's right, yeah. So we're going to use the ultra green mode called Green Plus. And um, the car says we have 85 miles of range and we have to stretch that out to 110. So this journey, Tommy, is gonna take us eight and a half hours if we had a gas car, it would take us six. We could have been home. Dad, I hate to break your bubble. I think it's nine and a half hours. No. Yeah. Really? Nine and a half how many, hours. How many hours of charging? Two and a half hours of charging and then seven and a half hours of driving because we gotta go slower than the speed limit. And that is if all the charging stations work uh, and if, you know, they're all, so I'm kind of uh, nervous. I had a hard time sleeping because I was worried about it. Uh, but you know, we're in the brave new age of electric cars, so let's hit the road and see how it goes. We'll see. Hey, if worse comes to worse, uh, I'll make it for a great video. Oh look, the bubble says we can Please make it, Tommy. Proceed to the highlighted route. The nice thing about the Mini is it gives you a bubble 
um, that shows you how far you can go. But we have to go in green plus mode, right? Yep, so we've got a bunch of different green modes, green and green plus, and then of course mid and sport, and that will change your estimated range. So in green plus it says 140 miles, in green 89 miles, so we'll stick it in green plus. All right, so in green plus mode, not only does it kill our air conditioning, it also kills the throttle response, so it's not ideal, Tommy. Yeah, that's a great point, Dad, and um, we kind of have to live with it because we are trying to get the most out of this little battery, which is a 32, I think, 6 kilowatt hour battery, but that is gross. They only let you use about 29 or so of that because they want to leave a buffer in there so you don't break it when you run it completely dead, as we will today. So we have 107 miles remaining. We got to go well below the speed limit, though. We use a program called uh, a better route planner. Yep. to decide on how far we drive and how far we charge and this is a free program not sponsored or anything but it's a free program where uh, you plug in your car and where you're going and your starting state of charge and it estimates how fast you need to go and how high you need to charge at each stop and it says that we need to basically have left with at least 90 yep. percent with the 100 we had to drive 55 and we will get there with about 10 percent so what we're doing to calculate our real world range is to ignore the basic little computer that has a guesso meter and just do some maths. So for example, we just use 10% of the battery and then we look at how far we went using 10% of the battery, in this case 15 miles, and if you multiply that out that would give us a real world range of 150, which would be plenty. But it's worth noting you also have to account for elevation changes. You don't want to use that method and then all of a sudden hit 50 miles of straight uphill because then you're going to be um, out of luck. So it's a little bit hit and miss but it seems to be a good solution. Alright Tommy, we are at 80%. Shall I cycle through to see how many miles you've gone? Yep. One more. 31. Yeah. Um, so can you do the math? Yep, so 31 times 5, 155 miles of range. But that was a big downhill stretch. So can we increase the speed by like 2 miles an hour? Sure, go up to 60. Go up to 60? I mean, it is kind of dangerous to be going this slow. The problem is can't go too much faster because it's exponential, right? Right. You'll use more power the faster you go, but you'll use a lot more power even by going a little bit faster. Now I know, you know, we just sold a Tesla, uh, and uh, once again, the range, the power, the electronics are probably next generation, but build quality, this one has it for sure. This feels like it's made out of one big chunk of metal versus many screechy little parts that in a Tesla seem not to be interconnected in such a such a faithful and long-lasting manner. Ooh, Tommy, we, uh, looks like we made it uh, with uh, at least 20% of the charge. We got about under two miles to get to uh, our first charging stop, and this is gonna be Electrify America, which we have used with different... Uh, <laughs> Levels of success. Exactly, <laughs> so uh, you know, there's a little bit of uh, trepidation going in here because if there's no charging, then we are gonna be stuck here in Wagon Mound which is uh, beautiful. Very beautiful. But uh, I'm guessing there's not a lot to do here. Can you see what percentage we're at right now? Yeah, we went 107 miles so far. Yep. So let me, 27%. 27%, wow. Yep. So we just crushed the um, estimation that we were given by Better Route Planner. I think we uh, even probably beat the EPA because this car is rated at 114 and we've been cruising along at about 61 miles per hour steady state for the last long, oh, long yeah. time, yep. yeah. And um, we're killing it. Yeah, I think realistically, this if you're you know if you're not doing 75, you probably have like more like 140 miles of range. Yeah, maybe 130, depending on the elevation, because this is a big deal out west here. They've got a lot of hills. Yeah. You know, some of the folks on the east coast don't have the mountain pass that we have to climb, and that can really throw a wrench into your plans. But now apparently, we're going to pull up to a Conoco, which is supposed to have a set of EA stations, Electrify America stations. And there was an app called PlugShare, yep. which is a way for dr drivers of electric cars to share their experience with different plugs. And from what I've read, we want to look for station number four. It seems to be the quickest one. Oh, you did your research, huh? Oh, yes. So where are we at percentage-wise? 27% battery. Yep. It says 34 miles remaining. Keep scrolling. Keep going. Averaging 4.8 miles per kilowatt hour. Keep going. And one more. We went 108.9 miles. 
pretty right. good. Yeah. All right, so we are here at the Electrify America. So now I'm going to open up the app. And a tip we learned is to start the session before you plug it in, even though it says to plug it in first. All right, here we go. Plugged in. All right, now for a big question. Will it work? Initiating, charging. This is always where I get a little nervous. That's a good sound. That's a better sound. <laughs> <laughs> now the gerbils are really spinning. Yeah. All right, we're going. 27%. 9 kilowatts, 21. This car is supposed to be capable of up to 50. 25 minutes left until 80%. The better route planner is saying 98%. Uh, but because we did such a good job on that last run of actually beating their projections, I think we're going to go to about 85%. And look, we stepped up to 45 kilowatts, so almost hitting the max, actually, which is pretty good. So we're going to go to 85%, see how long that takes, and then go from there. Yeah, this has been very painless, Tommy. This has been a good experience. <laughs> it's been a very good experience. Yeah. Like I said, Tommy, the golden age of electric car. Nobody out here but a Ford changing their tire. <laughs> All right, well, we were doing pretty good until about 75%. We were averaging like 48 kilowatts, which was nice. Now that we're at 80%, we dropped down into the mid-30s. We're going to go for another 4 or 5% and then hit the road. So far, we've been here for 22 minutes. So all in all, this will be about a 30-minute stop and then 84 miles to the next charging uh, Electrify America, which is a Walmart in Trinidad, Colorado. Look how much money we spent. $3.36. And that was 28 minutes. Cool. All right. Stopping. How much mileage does it say we have? How much range? 104. And it says we are at 86% state of charge. So that should be enough to get the job done, I'm thinking. Yeah, I think so too. How do you like this car and its driving dynamics? It's very good. It doesn't feel like most minis I've driven. I'm used to the older stuff. Yeah, of and, course. And they're really darty. This is much more BMW-like. The steering is much more planted and it, it's kind of less twitchy in a lot of ways. It does feel pretty heavy. This car is some 300 pounds heavier than the gasoline version of uh, the F56 generation of Mini. Yeah, they also gave it a little bit more ground clearance because of the batteries. So I think it's got one of the better rides of the Mini lineup, you know? Yeah, it does. So we just crossed into Colorado uh, and uh, I was a little worried going up. Is it Raton Pass? Uh, but it looks like we made it to the top and now we get to recover some energy going back down. On this route, we're currently 26% battery remaining. We've got 10 more miles till we can plug this puppy in. It was a good easy drive. We're still doing under the speed limit. So on this route, we're doing 65 instead of, you know, about 60. Now that regen is pretty strong. There's a button down here we can change from low to high regen. I'm actually going to go into low regen because that was... That's low regen even. Wow. You know, it's funny, when I first got in this car, I thought to myself, this is not enough range. But now that I'm, you know, it's funny how, like, you readjust your sense of how far you have to go, right? Uh, and so now this, like, 100 and, let's say, 30-ish, if you're going easy, seems fine to me. Yeah. Because, look, we've been driving for another hour and a half. I'm ready for a stop. We'll, we'll stop the camera again, and now we'll uh, pull into our, hopefully, uh, very empty and working Electrify America station in uh, Trinidad, Colorado. So these stations, one through three, someone left a sticky that's as slow as hell, which I think is so funny. Well, number but one doesn't have a sticky. This one has a sticky. What does this one say? 71421 works great. Ooh, there was a spider back there. Okay. All right, so number four here. Okay. Please plug in. All right. 26 minutes till full. We plugged in at 25%. We're gonna go all again by about to 85 because we've got, I think, 90 or so miles to the next stretch. But the bad news is, Electrify America and Pueblo says that their stations are down for service. All right, so here's the issue. I went onto this app I've been using called PlugShare, which is like social media for um, EV drivers. And I just noticed that yesterday, Electrify America LLC said we are busy on working on enhancements at this location, the Pueblo's place where we have to stop. Beginning Wednesday, July 21st, today, the chargers at this location will be temporarily unavailable for use. How could you say a day ahead of time that your chargers are going to be completely dead? That's not really cool for EV owners, especially considering Pueblo is pretty much very desolate when it comes to EV chargers. Apparently there is one other charge point location, one with maybe one plug that might work from a DC charging standpoint. So this is super, super disappointing that they would just say a day ahead of time. Now looking at the Electrify America app, it says that only one of the four is down. 
Um, so let's 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 do this, Tommy. Let's go to Electrify America. We'll try it. We'll try it. And if not, we'll try a Charge Point, which is on the network. Oh, that's interesting. But now what I'm seeing yeah. is that the one that was down is back up. Okay. And now a different one is down. So maybe they're taking them down one at a time to renew them. Let's hope so. Let's hope so because uh, otherwise we're gonna have to try to. Well, we we could probably could make it to the springs, right? Yep. But we'd have to crawl. And the issue is, to make it to the springs, we'd have to go to 100% because it's 130 miles away. Yeah. And to go 100%, we'd have to be here for like another 50 minutes because once you get above 90%, the mini just charges so slowly. Well, we got we got good. We chicken got snacks. Here. All right, yeah. let's go have some snacks. Yeah. All right, 89%. We're pulling just 16 kilowatts, so we were here for 30 minutes, five dollars and 89 cents. All right, cool. So far, we spent what, like eight bucks? Yeah, nine bucks. To go um, 250 miles, that's not bad. No, not too bad. So hopefully I'm wrong and they're open. Otherwise, it's gonna get a little bit interesting because the one charge point unit I found is, uh, well, it's a little sketchy. <laughs> and it's only 15 kilowatt. Why is it sketchy? Uh, it's just, it's like there's only one of them and it's in a park. And from what I've read, it's kind of hit and miss, so. Oh. I guess worst comes to worst, we'll uh, try to find a nice place to have lunch with a level two charger and sit there for an hour and a half. Yeah, so plan one is Electrify America. Plan two is plug share, right? Mm -hmm. Plan three is lunch. Lunch. Plan with, four is trailer. With a level two charger and not quick charging and then hopefully we have enough power just to get us to the springs, which we probably should. Yeah. I think if you charge us up at home at night, you'll have no issues. Oh yeah. No, for sure. I think you're, you're right on with saying that. Um, and then even if you're in the city and you need to see the little Power 50 is good enough to get you at least home. It's just not ideal on longer road trips. So you found something interesting. You found a charger in La Junta. Or do you say La Junta? Yeah, it's um, kind of um, a hidden thing. And it looks brand new and apparently it's kind of unreliable based on uh, uh, what people are saying on plug share. But the folks who are running it this is something called EV Trail, and they say as of three or four days ago, both plugs are up and charging. And apparently it's free too because they're trying to figure out some of the kinks behind it. We are three miles away, and we're still at over 50% state of charge, but the idea here is we might be able to use this sketchy charger to get us past Pueblo, where we know that the um, Electrify America, at least according to the app, is down, and then get us to Colorado Springs, where there should be one that's working. So we could leapfrog the EA charger, which we all know is working, and just uh, go all the way to the springs. That would be great. Uh, we'll see. Don't get too excited. Why? I don't know. I just it's a it's a, it's a company and a charger I've never heard of. And, Are you so saying it's gonna it's gonna, it, it's it's gonna not, break, break it, our car? No, it's just not like gasoline, right? It, you can put gasoline in a hole and it's gonna get in the hole. You could put diesel in a hole and it's gonna break your car too. But that's true, but I'm saying when you're charging, there's a handshake that has to happen between the car and the charger. Right. There's actually code exchanged between the two of them. That allows it to charge. Right, I think it's up here. It's behind apparently a really good diner. You just said the magic word, dude. What, diner? Yeah, after those two eggs and donut, I could use something more substantial. All right, well, we'll check it out. There it is. There it is. All right, get the fire extinguisher ready. <laughs> it's a Chatamo, I think, and a... And a CCS EV Trail Fest charging. Okay. Okay, we'll give this a go. Let's give that a go. Fai Hong. Oh my. We've got Chinese electricity, Tommy. Chineseium. Apparently it's free, plug in to start. CCS connected. connected. Okay. Activating charging session. Okay, that's good. If this works, I will eat my left shoe. Uh oh, look at that. Clicked. I'm not hearing much dead. Oh, uh, yeah, this does not look good. Not looking promising. No. Doesn't look good, does it? Push the button. Yeah. All right. Well, it was worth a shot. It was worth a shot. Yeah, it was definitely worth a shot. Oh, connecting. Connected. It says connected, Tommy. So it's connecting, it just won't activate the charging session. Clicks. It clicks. Then it thinks. And then it does nothing. No, so it says, it looked it's got a little green check mark. I think it sees a car. It definitely sees a car. Alright, I'll let, let Evie, Evie go know it, or uh, plug share know it's not working. 
and we'll go to uh, Pueblo. You know what's crazy, Tommy? Pueblo, I mean, I, I came down here to get my second shot of the COVID. Um, and what's crazy is it's a big town. This is not a small town, and yet there are only two level three chargers in the entire town. As far as I can tell, there might be a Tesla charger, but of course it doesn't help us. No. Yeah, there's this um, Electrify America uh, network at the Walmart, and then there's one other <laughs> single charge point unit at a park in West Pueblo. So we're gonna try the EA station because we've had pretty good luck with those. The worker. Just informed us that they're up and running, Tommy. Woo! Woo! All right. Hey! Hey, you can make it. I think we're gonna we're gonna have good luck here. So I will give this a shot. We're gonna use this one and string it over and we'll see what happens. Yeah. Checking, connecting the vehicle. That's always a good sign. And we need those gerbils running. I think we're going. I think we're going. We don't have that sign of the gerbils running. There they go. There it goes. 25, 26, 27. 28, 29, 30. All right, we're going. So we're gonna be here for not very long. Yeah. I vote we uh, stay here till maybe 60, 80%. Yeah. And then make it to the springs. And then it's a mad dash from there, 44. All right, now we've got some real speed going. Tommy, apparently that one wasn't working, so the guy was here to fix it. You read that they're installing batteries. It doesn't matter. Thank you, America, Electrify America. We were wrong, you're rocking it, and uh, you know, we've been hard on that company, so I don't want to. I don't want to be unfairly hard. You know, the charger's working, the spaces are open. It's all good. Now, I'm not a big fan of these uh, pull-in Electrify America stations because for cars with the port on the right rear, they are in exactly the wrong side. You got to kind of stretch them around the other side, and then it kind of confuses folks. But we made it work. Super happy that they uh, left some stations open, even while they're doing construction. Great to see Electrify America. Sorry that uh, I thought. They'd all be closed because that's what it said on the PlugShare app, but we're good to go. And uh, in terms of charging... $5.58, um, and we uh, took in 18 kilowatt hours over 24 minutes. All right, shall we stop and keep going? Yep. So we just stopped here to top off quickly from about 50 to 80% here in Colorado Springs. And one thing we've noticed is someone has been leaving stickies uh, letting other users know how it works. This one says, charging start error. Um, this one is unavailable altogether. This one says, won't initialize. And this one says, plug too slow, use one. Very helpful actually, very helpful from the EV community to be writing these stickies. Well and actually it looks like this one needs a sticky too. Number two here is uh, not initiating the charge. That's no good. We may want to try plug number one, see if that one's better. Can you unlock it? Yeah, it's stuck. That's not good. There needs to be a force quit. Yeah. Now we're locked into place on the charger. This is this is exactly the kind of thing that makes this trip miserable. You know, a gas station will never hold blocking your uh, your charger. So close to Denver too. There, got Error. it. Got it, okay. So uh, Electrify America had to actually send a signal. Oh, now, now they're both unavailable. We've had so many issues uh, with these stations where it's you just you just never you never know in the last 20 times we've charged oh here comes the sound this one sounds good so I'm saying you know I'm always worried about it because when we did the Porsche like like one out of ten times there's an issue and yeah that's why there's a little sticky notes right yeah people uh, do have some issues with them that's that's for sure but we're up and running 27 we're only gonna go to 80 percent Dude, I gotta tell you I, I know this is not a big deal but sitting here in the springs with the charger stuck in the car just really was not good. Yeah, you're really grumpy about it. Yeah, it was fine. We, she fixed it. She canceled it. Oh, on yeah, her. I know, but forgot. Really? Like, like now I'm thinking to myself, what happens if we can't fix it? You know, Mr. Golden Age of electric cars here. I agree. I, yeah. Yeah. No, it's fine. Did I, I mean, say it was a golden age of charging? Yes, you do, because you imply <laughs> that no one else is well, here. There's no one else here, exactly. and we know why, because they're all charging at home. Well. I think we did get it working. It did take a little bit of creativity, but now we are on our way up to 80%. Then Englewood, one more quick stop in Boulder, and we are done. 
And the good news is I think there's an EV go like on the other side of the parking lot even if this crapped out. Well that'd be great unless you're hooked in and you can't you can't, you know, unplug. Yeah. Alright, we'll charge up here for just a little bit and then onward. What's a little bit? To like 80. That could be at 30 at 38 kilowatts, that could be 20 minutes. It tells you 17 minutes. 17 minutes, yeah. That's what I guessed. Alright, All good right. stuff. Good news, I think, Dad. Maybe this one doesn't get the gerbils. Yes! First try. All right, 32%. One kilowatt, three, five, six, seven. Come on, buddy. Oh, 40, yeah, yeah. yay, okay, okay. 42, 44. 45 seems to be our, like. 45 seems to be the sweet spot. Yeah. All right, we got 43 miles to get home. So I think, what, 50%? Yeah, something like that. Now and we there's can, traffic. Now we can, how bad is it? One hour to get home. Oh. It's not too bad. No? Well, okay. 12 minute delay. All right. All right, we'll go to 50. 3 o'clock. Remember I said it was going to Yeah, traffic's building. building. All right, we got a Frosty. Hey, yum. There's a Wendy's and all sorts of grass cutting going on here, but I think we're done on our final stop. So we didn't need much. We went from 32 to 61, 11 minutes, $2.48. Car was consistently requesting 47 kilowatts. So I think it's time we unplug and hit the road for the final stretch. Yay, let's go home. So, you know, before we got here, I said, Tesla's gonna open up their charging network, potentially to people like us. And the question, of course, is why? That's a huge advantage for Tesla, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're kind of talking about it, and it kind of makes sense in a weird way. It could be like the difference between being Apple and Verizon, right? Uh, if Tesla opens up their charging network, maybe the long-term play is to own the network, right? Yep. To own the charging infrastructure. And you can actually potentially make more money on being Verizon than being Apple. Not a bad thought, Dad. Yeah, I don't know. Could be. But, uh, you know, Electrify America has come a long way. I was kind of grumpy because it was like 100 degrees. I was hot. Uh, and, of course, the uh, charger was not letting go of our car. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's been, you know, it's been interesting. I think as a road trip car, you have fun with it. But we are probably now almost two and a half hours longer than if we had just, you know, driven it normally with an ice car. Yeah, between these slowdowns from actually driving slower to make it to some of the chargers to, um, you know, slower charger speeds. I don't know, I had a lot of fun. I actually thought it was pretty easy and pretty, pretty stress-free, which is unusual because I usually get really stressed on these things. But there's a lot of chargers now, even in a relatively unpopulated area. We were typically stopping every 80 to 90 miles or so, about 90 miles. Really no difficulty. And yeah, just had a real blast. It's really, really fun. Yeah, this is a really fun car. I can't wait to like actually, you know, drive it around home in sport mode where I'm not trying to make miles on the highway or try to get through Denver traffic before it builds to the point where it's going to take us three hours to get through it. Very good point. Yep, but we're almost home now. Car was super solid on the highway, pretty quiet and really, really comfortable, which was a big surprise. So uh, super pleased with it. As a road tripper, charging speeds are pretty slow range. You can probably stretch it to 130, but not super great for road trips. But it can be done. Yeah, it can be done. And uh, next time you see us, <laughs> we'll have the final numbers on how much uh, money we spent and how many miles we went. Cool. I, I can tell you it's going to be right around 500 miles, not dollars. I was going to say, Jesus. <laughs> All right. Well, we made it. It only took uh, nine hours, Tommy. Ten hours. No, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, three, four. Four. Ten hours. So five hours longer than normally would. Well, maybe three and a half. If you drove straight, you could do yeah, it in like five. Yeah, but you need to stop for gas and potty breaks. All right. So almost four hours longer. Uh, car is great, uh, but it's definitely a city car. Uh, not, um, you know, one that uh, I would want to cross country on a regular basis. So what are the numbers? Total of 484.1 miles driven from Albuquerque, $21.69 spent on electricity through Electrify America stations and only one charging error in Colorado Springs. Keep in mind too, we had another 45 minutes you have to add on top of that because we did stay the night at a hotel yesterday after driving from Albuquerque to Santa Fe. So it was a long trip. I still think it was super fun. As long as you're willing to take your time and enjoy the trip rather than the destination, it is possible to road trip the Mini Cooper SE.